Welcome to the Purpose to Create podcast with Natasha Wright, a business podcast for photographers and creative preneurs who want to level up as they pursue their purpose to create. Lean in as we connect, inspire, and impact you as you build and grow your business. I'm so hyped that you're here and listening to today's show. Today's guests are Karis and Joshua of Ferris Photos and Films a husband and wife team specializing in wedding and corporate photography based in Dallas, Texas, who capture special moments all around the country and across the world. In today's episode, we're chatting all about family, faith, and photography. Hey, Karis and Joshua, welcome to the show. Hey, hey. what's going on? Hey, hey. So before I jump into the show, I want to know a little bit about how you're doing and how your little ones are doing. I know it's the summertime and a lot of fun summer activities. so. What's been going on with you guys? Yeah, so we have been super busy this summer, just going from one thing to the next thing. Uh, we've had about six weeks of travel, and then we have um, a week, uh, a wedding every weekend in August. So we're just stacked. Um, and so, you know, definitely making time to have fun with the kids while we, um, <laughs> while we are in this busy season. Oh, yeah. awesome. We've been, like she said, extremely busy. And then just recently, my father passed. So that has added a lot to our summer. So he passed unexpectedly. So, But that's why we're here talking today, to help other photographers and other creatives learn the importance of building their business and implementing systems, you know, for when unexpected things like this come up. You know, it's important to have those things in place so you can continue and your business not fall. And I'm sorry to hear about your dad. Oh, no problem. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. All right. So let's jump right into it because we have so much to cover in today's episode. So first, tell me a little bit about your creative journey. Yeah. So Karison I's creative journey started at Baylor University um, while we were in college. I had started the photography business. I started shooting portraits, um, events, and things of that nature. And then I met Karis, who was already a creative guru in her own right, right? So she was a fashion design major. She was over there, you know, drawing sketches of dresses and doing all those things and having, you know, making websites and all of that. So once we started dating, uh, she, you know, offered to help me just level up my business and we had just been going from there. So from there, it started, you know, redoing my branding, my website and all that, helping me pose couples. You know, we were we shot our first engagement session together, then our wedding together and all of that. But so that was kind of the start of that. And then as it when it got kind of serious, you know, every time you get into a new level of entrepreneurship or your business, you get kind of caught in this decision-making process of do I go deeper and double in of everything I think I just built or do I stay where I'm at? And uh, I had a decision to make either continue my mechanical engineering career or, you know, quit photography, basically. Which one did I want to give my all to? And as I was about to quit photography and go all in with engineering, she was like, don't quit, you know, I'll help you. And so from there, that's when she started basically running the, the business side of our business and helping with shooting and everything that whatever she needed to do to keep the business afloat. And she didn't only keep it afloat, she grew it. And so we had just been going ever since then. Oh, wow. Okay. So what's your version, Karis? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he just made me sound so good. So I will take that version. <laughs> However, <laughs> no, I think that part of what he didn't mention is, you know, he started his photography journey just because he's the first man in his family to go to college. And so, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so he really just wanted to document his college experience. And so that's really why he started. And so he started off cutting hair in the dorm room, which turned into the money for his first camera from a pawn shop, which turned him to, you know, shoot parties and that kind of college thing, and which turned into somebody actually getting him a job working for Baylor sports just because they knew that he was taking photos and that that was kind of his thing. So uh, just being dedicated to what he was doing and committed to that opened open some big doors for him because, um, you know, he was able to use some really nice camera equipment to to start doing photos for mm -hmm. people's graduation and all that. And it did just spiral from there. So I definitely took a page out of his book. I wasn't thinking about being a, a photographer at first, but he lured me into it for sure. <laughs> and so as a couple, what inspired you to work together 
So what is it like working with your spouse? I love it. (laughs) I do too. I think, I think, I really think there's no better person to work with. It's weird because this is all we know, you know, from the inception of our relationship, we've been working together. Right. So one, I feel like I have a perfect mate in life and to work with, but I also feel like other couples can work together. You know, if you have to talk and communicate and work through life together, you know, doing it through a business is almost the same thing, you know? So we operate and run our lives almost like a business, you know, yeah. just as importantly. So why can't we do business together as well? I trust her. Everything, when I win, she wins. You know, I don't think that, you know, I just truly believe that if you put the work in, there's no better mate or no better partner in business than your wife or your husband. Right. And I imagine that you have to establish roles and responsibilities, right? Off of each other's strengths and weaknesses. What are some tips for other creative entrepreneurs who are thinking about working with their spouse or working with their spouse and they, they may have a difficult time because I hear a lot of horror stories with couples who work with their spouse and (laughs) they're ready to throw the whole spouse away. But, you know, I'm sure that there is a way that you can work with your spouse if you define those roles up front. Absolutely. And I I always say, play to your strengths. Like, don't try to do something that God has not gifted you with. (laughs) Like, I know finances are not my strong suit. Numbers are not my thing. So I'm not going to be the one saying, oh, you know, this is the pricing structure and, you know, this is what makes sense in terms of investments and gear. And no, that's his arena. He's great with money. He's great with numbers. He's great with, you know, details and things like that. And, you know, at the same time, I don't think he's going to say, you know, we we need to change up our posing technique. (laughs) Like, you know, he's like, all right, you got it. Like, you know, I can maybe give a suggestion every year, every now and again, but, you know, he kind of leaves that to me. And so I think that we, know our strengths and we know what we're good at and we allow each other to be good at those things and to thrive at those things so that when we come together like I mean it sounds so cheesy but we really do complete each other (laughs) (laughs) and so you know it works well in marriage I think it taught us a lot in marriage just you know playing to our strengths not only in the business but like you know we have kids we have a home like you know, this provides for our livelihood. And so it has definitely taught us, you know, how to talk to each other, how to, you know, on a respect level, like we we're in business, but we're also married. And so in business, sometimes like I remember in the beginning, it was like, hold on, you can't be talking to me anyway. Like, yeah, I know we work together, but so even just in things like that, like learning how to respect one another in more ways than just like, I'm your husband, you're my wife, but like, you're also, you know, the CEO of this company. And it's just, you know, I mean, I think there are so many ways that that it is beneficial to a husband and wife, you know, and also as business owners. Absolutely. I think the overarching thing that we try to consistently think about is just unity. I think if you focus on that, making sure that we're good, making sure that we're both, you know, shooting in the right, in the same direction in this war of entrepreneurship and business, then everything else will fall in place as long as we're in alignment, right? So as long as we can make sure we're on the same team, it doesn't matter who gets the game winning shot. To me, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter who gets the accolades because our bank account is the same. So as long as we have the same purpose, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? So we have the same purpose and we're on the same team. After that, it goes back to what you were saying. It's just roles and responsibilities and how you delegate those two. And, And me as the head, I'm willing to do anything, you know, I'm willing to do the dirty work. And so as long as we stay in that mindset and we're focused on making sure that we are unified in what we're doing, it works. Right. And so you have children. And so we're going to add that into the mix. So we, we dealt with you two as a couple, but now let's add into your family. How do you balance having a family and being full-time entrepreneurs? Yeah, I think that came, we had to learn it. (laughs) Um, I think that's the bottom line. You know, I got pregnant seven months after we got married and I was 22. He was 24. I was like, oh my God, this was not in the plan. You know, so it was definitely a surprise for us, at least not for God, but for us. And so we pretty quickly had to learn how to, you know, be married young with a baby, but also working together. And so I think, you know, now what that has evolved into is it's a mutual respect. I think because we work together, we have a different understanding of like 
what has to be done during a day. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, we have a very high level of communication. Like I know if he has a deadline that he has to meet. And so that, that I am able to give grace, like, all right, I got the kids. I know it's your day to pick them up, but like, don't worry about it. I got it. You can, you know, work in your office. It's cool. And vice versa. And, you know, because we do work together and because we do make our own schedules and because, you know, we have been responsible with growing the business and, you know, making space for us to take breaks. We have been able to also like say, all right, we're not doing anything today. We're going to devote this time to our kids or, hey, we're going to just take off early, pick them up and do something with them. And so I think that it is definitely both of us giving grace constantly and then also just building a smart business so that you can actually be with your family mm-hmm. and you're not a slave to it. Absolutely. And that's crazy you say that because a lot of the time, you know, when you think about it, a lot of people don't treat their business like a tool. They treat it more so like their lives and it ends up taking away from the very thing that they want, which is some type of freedom, whether it's time, money, location, whatever it is, a lot of the time it ends up bringing more stress and you can't go spend time with your kids and all of that. So when it comes down to the kids and how we balance it, we try to treat our business as a tool and keep the priorities in line, meaning family first, right? So because we're treated like a tool, we're able to spend time with the kids when we need to. So it's a tool to get more freedom. It's a tool to get more resources to give. It's a tool to bring in those things. And so we definitely use it as a tool to be able to spend time with the kids when we want. Right. And so let's jump right into really building a smart business, the business side of photography. And so, you know, you recently had to deal with the death of your father unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. So how do you build a business that will be able to sustain itself when you really have to take time off to be with your family, to go through, you know, to go through that? So let's talk about some strategies that you use or want to share that people can do in their own business. Absolutely. Absolutely. So in this instance, the business was only able to go on because for number one, care stepped up and did everything that I would have been doing or was doing, but she was able to do that because there were, there was systems for that. There were systems and we also have a team of people who were there able to support us as well, but they're only able to do what they do because there are systems for that. So my first thing would be for any creative looking to be able to automate their business is first look at the things that they're doing write those tasks down and figure out which ones can be automated or how. That's yeah. step number one. <clears throat> yeah. If you ask for like one tip or a task or, you know, whatever, that's where I would start for anybody. Yeah, it's to definitely automate and delegate. That's the- <laughs> You got to know what you're doing. Yeah, I think those are the really the primary two things is to automate and delegate. Uh, Josh, for a year of his life, it was the most annoying <laughs> thing right. ever. For a whole entire year. I've never seen anybody so consistent. He documented every minute of his life. The moment I went full time and was no longer a mechanical engineer, this is what I did. Yeah, he literally, I don't know what app it was. I just know that it was annoying as all get out. But every minute he did anything, he was, if he got in the shower, he was documenting, you know, shower time. If he was working, he was documenting that. If we were having quality time, he was documenting that. I was like, don't put me on that timer. You know, it was so annoying. <laughs> But by the end of that year, he had such a comprehensive view of what he was doing with his time. And then from that, it really just propelled him to say like, okay, great. Like, in, you know, you could probably speak to this better than I can, but okay, great. Like, this is what is happening with my time. Like, great. This is the things that I can delegate. Maybe this is the thing that I can automate. And then really probably in the last six months, there was a period of time where he <laughs> moved his, moved a table in the garage. And I mean, he was working like from sun up till sundown. We just didn't see much of him. And I, I can't even to this day tell you everything that he was doing, but I know that after he finished, that like month of just complete focused work that we hired a ton of people. We automated a lot of stuff and our loads got so much lighter. And so you could probably attest to what you were doing to make that happen. But I say all of that to say he spent a year of his life documenting his time. And then he spent at least a month working on how to automate and delegate, you know, and so that a weight could be lifted from us. I mean, we do have two kids and so, and we do love our business, but that doesn't mean that we want to be slaves to it. Right. And so 
you know, he really refined, you know, our business in that year and a month of really hard work and, and all of that to get us to the point where, you know, unfortunately when his dad did pass away, I was able to take over. But had he not, you know, gone through all of that and had those systems and processes and like this person doing this, this person doing that, you know, where I could easily continue on to my role, but pick up his as well, it would have been very difficult. So when you came to the decision to delegate, what steps did you go through to outsource parts of your business? Like what parts were you kind of holding on to? Which parts did you know to give away? Like what was that? What did that look like? (laughs) I will say I, it is very difficult for me to give things away. I did not want anybody to touch anything like from emails to editing to, I mean, Instagram. I was like, don't touch it. Leave me alone. We fine. I don't like change. (laughs) So it was very difficult for me. And Josh really did have to level me up in that sense of like showing me like, like, look how much freedom you have. Social <laughs> media manager. Like, I was like, okay, I think I might like this. You know, <laughs> things like that. So I was going to say he took the lead on that for sure. But it did. And I think there are still things, though, that, you know, I don't let go. We had to figure out what was important that we held on to for the sake of our clients, for the sake Mm -hmm. of our quality Mm -hmm. and consistency. Mm -hmm. And that just was personal to us. You know, what, what specifically did we still need to touch for, to make sure that our business was staying, you know, consistent and, and uh, true to what our clients had seen from us. And so that just took time and discernment. Nope. You're absolutely right. I mean, if you if you think about it, we have different levels of growth when it comes into being a CEO or owner or an investor or entrepreneur. And from the beginning, I kind of had to battle with that and learn that to, to give away because I was caught already. It was like, do I need to, I can't keep up my business and my engineering. So from right then, I had to start learning how to delegate. I started I had the perfect person to give it to. She was close. You know what I mean? So right. it was the perfect person to to grow with. That's why I say husbands and wives have a, a connection and a type of relationship that I think would be great for business. But so from the beginning, I had to do that. And yeah, then, I didn't have to delegate to nobody. So yeah, that's why I was like, you want me to what? And I'm just giving it to <laughs> You want me to get this to who? So from the beginning, think <laughs> about how sentimental you are to your art as a new photographer. From the beginning, I had my whole editing process ripped from me. So from the beginning, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait, exactly. hold on, time out, time out. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> what do you mean you had it ripped from you? Okay, yo, do you want to know how Kara started shooting? Why she started? <laughs> yes, I want to know all of that. Yeah, so basically, this is how it happened. I was shooting, I was doing my thing, and Karis would help me with posing the people <laughs> so I could focus on shooting, you know? And after a while, she started looking at the picture. She was like, mm, I don't know if I really like that. I was like, mm, I didn't know if I really asked for your opinion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, and then, so it went into, okay, well, she was like, can I see the camera? And then, like, I better take a pick up a picture. She, she was like, this is more so my vision. I know this is not right, but do it like this. You know what I'm saying? So she would, you know, yeah. basically find her vision. Because she would tell me to do this and do I'm like, Karis. You don't, have you looked through the camera? And so, <laughs> no, and then, but so eventually, basically she took it, she just took, it, you know, so I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have any type of a long emotion. I didn't have a chance to get so connected with my art. I think <laughs> it's venting right now, but anyway. <laughs> you, know, that's, you know, that's what the show is for. Yeah, it's all good. But, but because I did not, it helped me focus on the business, right. which a lot of creatives right. don't do. It helped yeah. me focus on the business and not get stuck working in my business. And, yeah, and he the, literally had to pull me out of yeah. being stuck working in and on yeah, the I was business. Like, I'm, you know. I'm getting out, but it's no fun if I can't have her out with me. So yeah. right. we just got her growing it until we're both out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's real. I, and you made a very. Sorry, I will clear clarify not out of shooting and all of that, right, but right. we necessarily can't do all of the, like the bookkeeping. And I remember when I was doing all my stuff in Excel, you know, myself, that's the type of out when I'm talking. I don't, I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Anything else you want to clarify? (laughs) (laughs) No, I mean, that's so real. And I think in our industry, that's a huge gap. People really don't talk a lot about the business side of things. Like 
the nitty gritty of the business side. Like we spent a little bit of time shooting and the rest on the back end. Oh yeah. And so that, you know, even in, when we go to workshops and conferences, they talk about the fluffy stuff, I feel, right? They don't really talk about what it takes to really sustain a business. Oh, yeah. So when you talked about being able to, you know, work on your business and not in your business, that was major right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because life happens. Life happens. Bills happen. And when you are 100 percent relying on what you do to eat, it ain't no game. It ain't a joke then, you know. So it's important that you implement these things and think like a, a, a true boss and owner, you know from the get so you can alleviate any type of pains and frustrations that, you know, will come from life. Right. And that's, you know, that's a whole mindset shift that has Absolutely. to happen. Absolutely. If you, if you don't have that mindset shift, then you, you're not going to make it very far. Nope. Nope. Unfortunately. You really have to, like you said, think like a boss and be a boss and, and take some ownership in your business. And really when it comes down to it, you got to do the work. Absolutely. And, and think, and try be working towards something bigger than yourself. Because if you're only trying to fulfill yourself, you don't have enough purpose and passion to even fulfill and give the value to all the customers that will come through you and to you in a lifespan of a successful business. So it has to be towards a bigger purpose. Right, exactly. And ultimately, yeah, we're shooting, but we're also serving our clients. And we're and our goal is to serve them well. Absolutely. So I'll take that as an opportunity to shift gears a little bit. So we can talk about faith in photography and how faith plays a role in your photography business and just even as creative entrepreneurs. Yeah, I mean, I would say from my end, it has been faith itself (laughs) to keep me holding on. And I don't say that from a negative stance at all. I think that just the person I am, I don't like change. Um, it is very difficult for me. I don't like risk taking. Um, and Josh is like the king of change and risks. And I remember like just an example, um, you know, we had decided to, or I don't even say we, he had decided (laughs) to get pro photo lights. And I just thought at the time it was such a waste of money. I was like, our lights are fine. Like, this is so expensive. Why would you do this? (laughs) And he brought them home and I about blew a guest. Like, I just thought that is, why would you go and buy, spend that much money? And then you, I, I about a month later, I was like, this was the best <laughs> ever made. This is awesome. And so, like, I say that, like, just as a perfect example of, for me specifically, it has been a lesson in believing in, having faith in my own a husband that he has been, place at the head of my home for a reason and that following Josh and really honoring him as the head of my home in the areas he takes risks um, and having faith in him, all of that really translated over to my relationship with God and knowing what it looks like to truly have faith in him when I feel like, oh my gosh, you know, this doesn't make sense. I don't like this change. This risk doesn't feel good to know that like God has got my back and that he has my best interest at heart, just like Josh does, that he's not doing anything to harm me or anything to hurt me. And that even the hard things are made to make me better. And so really, I think I've learned so much in just our business relationship about how God cares for me in my personal relationship with the father. And so I don't know, it's been really cool just to see how God uses our marriage and our business relationship to just teach me personal lessons. Yeah, I love it. I think that's one of the big reasons why I like working together with my spouse is just because of how much we grow and can learn and iron sharpens iron. Absolutely. Absolutely. Simply said, this has taught us that Jesus is our source. Oh, yeah. That's it. You know, and from there, everything else, if we stay in alignment, it works out, right? So as long as I, it's taught me Cares is my first focus, focus on home first, and then business usually works out, whatever it is, you know? So <laughs> it, I'm just, hey, I'm just trying to give you the, the Cliff Notes version of entrepreneurs. And when it comes to faith, realize that Jesus first is your source. Follow him, seek him first in everything, business decisions, whatever it is. And usually at the end of the day, you'll be okay. I know that is very short or it makes it seem very simple, 
but it's the truth. So I mean, it really is just. <laughs> as, I mean, it really is just that simple. I mean, you know I, what I mean? Like, I don't think it's overly complicated when we involve God in our plans. You know, He will make sure that everything is aligned and also gives us the desires of our hearts. Absolutely. So. I mean, I totally agree with that. So I don't think that is too simple. I think that and, is And this is coming from somebody who for years overcomplicated. I'm a what's the formula type of guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, tell me what to do. There's a formula for everything. If I follow X, Y, and Z, I'm going to get the result that I'm looking for. And right. so for so long, I'm trying to figure it out. But And that's the result that I have come to. <laughs> Mr. Formula Man has come down to Jesus is the source. Seek him first and everything. and It'll work out. Everything else will be added on to you. That's it. There you go. <laughs> so before we wrap up, I wanted to do something a little bit fun okay. <laughs> that you guys don't know about until right now. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you three rapid fire questions. All right. These things, you know, because I pulled them from your website. What is your favorite date night? Movie and uh, dinner for me. And, uh, oh, wait, am I supposed to tell his? No, no. You guys answer together as a couple. Yeah, that's right. I agree. Oh. I agree. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what are some of your favorite things you like to do with your kids? I think I pulled this off your Instagram, but yeah. Oh, then it's off of your Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Rapid fire. Oh, play. <laughs> I'll go with that. Playing. Okay. Oh. Oh, well, I, yeah, yeah, we like to play. We just like to play. We like to yeah. Play. We cook, <laughs> cook together, like, like yeah, to cook, cook together, play basketball, play swimming, play. Yeah, we like to play. We like play. to have a good time. Play, it's a good good one. Okay, this one I don't know for Joshua, and maybe Karis I don't know, but I'm a avid follower of your devotionals on your <laughs> <laughs> and I love them oh so much. Oh, um, thank you. I'm going to pause right there for a second, but... Speaking on your devotionals, I think as a creative, it felt good for me to see another creative just talk about God and being an entrepreneur. Because when I started photography, I never heard any creative talk about God at all. And so I often felt alone because my love for God was so big, but I felt like I couldn't really express yeah, that, yeah. mix it with my business because right. I, I was afraid of what people would say and things like that, that it would turn them off. but you do it so well. And it's like, not that you give me permission, but you make me feel free and being able to honor God and talk about God as a creative entrepreneur. And I really don't care what people think. You know what I'm saying? So what you either going to agree or not agree or like, or don't like, but at the end of the day, like my love for God, he is the reason I'm a creative. And so why not honor him and give him the glory? Um, whenever he places on my heart too. And because of that, it's really opened up a lot of doors for me to be able to witness two other creative entrepreneurs. Oh, that's awesome. To build up in their faith. So it's it's just been really awesome. So I just wanted to, while I have you here, to thank you for, yeah. for yeah. operating and doing that in excellence because it thank just, you. it frees me to be able to walk my walk with God too. Thank you. Thank you. And you will find that as you continue to be vocal about God and what he's done for you and what he could do for others, that the people who don't need to be in your life will slowly fade away anyway. And the people who are like you and like-minded with you and the people you need to be running with anyway, will slowly emerge to the top, like the cream de la creme that they are. And so keep going, keep, you know, pursuing God in that way. Keep talking about him out loud. Don't hesitate. Because the people who you need to be around who are listening to that will come at the top for sure. Right. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So back to my little rapid fire questions. My yes. first one is, uh, what is your favorite scripture in each of you? Oof. That's a hard one. I don't know. I think mine changes really it's just a, depending on what, what's happening morning, in my but, life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but my my, my go-to one is John 15.5. Mm. You know, abide in me and you are as long as you abide me you can do all things or whatever but, yeah 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 i was just reading that last night mm-hmm. my study but that, and that that verse just reminds me what it is to stay in him right if right. i stay in him i'll produce much fruit all i want to do is produce fruit for my family produce fruit for those who i love i just want to give and help and be right. productive impactful and so as long as i stay within him that will happen and as long as my purpose is aligned with his, that will happen. And it's also a reminder, if I do not, I won't be able to do anything. 
So it's pretty black and white. It's just a great reminder in me and my life of what should come first. And it should be remaining and abiding in him. So, yeah, I would say right now, I was trying to remember while he was talking, it's either like Romans 13, 8 or Romans 8, 13. One of the two, I'm mixing it up, but it really just talks about how discipline does not feel good. It does not feel easy when you're trying to be disciplined, but it turns over its results later and that you benefit later from the discipline. And I think that's just been my mantra right now because we've just been really busy and you know sometimes I do just want to take a nap or like be like yeah go watch Peppa Pig (laughs) you know lay on the couch and zonk out you know on scrolling through Instagram you know that's the easy thing to do the hard thing is giving more when I have nothing you know the hard thing is working longer hours when I'm tired and so but knowing that when I have decided to do that when I'm tired when I feel like I have nothing left that that produces so much more fruit. The discipline produces so much more fruit because it's not only me doing something that I don't want to do that God is providing me the strength to do, um, but it really is also teaching or, or uh, refining my character. Yeah. Um, and so it's doubly um, just important. And so I think that's just, that's my favorite verse right now. Right now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> totally something different. <laughs> right. And this season, well, I want to share. Um, so <laughs> uh, but mine is uh, Josh, right now in this season, because I'm like every season is something different right now is definitely Joshua 1-9. Oh, yeah. It talks yeah. about being strong and courageous and not being afraid because God is with you wherever you go. So yeah. In this season, he really has me stepping outside of my comfort zone and just really reaffirming to me that don't be afraid. Like, I'm going to be with you where I'm telling you to go. You just got to go. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So, we, have that, we have that above my son's yeah. crib. That yeah. Verse. Oh, yeah. Nine. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. All right. Uh, bonus. And then I'm done. <laughs> what? Right. Because I'm a foodie. So I have to ask this question. What is your favorite wing stop wing flavor? Oh, you asked the right people for that. <laughs> you asked the right people or the wrong people. I, I don't know. <laughs> so mine was, it was the combo of lemon pepper and, and yeah. teriyaki, but they got rid of the teriyaki, which was just ridiculous. We're also bringing it back. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. And I'm a lemon pepper and uh, original, hot. original hot type of dude. Oh, yeah, I love the lemon. Depending on how I'm feeling, I might mix them all up together and, you know, <laughs> you know get a little hot. Spicy on your lemon pepper. pepper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look good. Uh, now I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> but before we go, can you tell us how we can stay connected to you after the show? Absolutely. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, our website. Everything is at Ferris Photos. P-H-A-R-R-I-S photos. And on there, that's where we give a lot of tips about how to run your business, how to shoot, um, also how to balance your life and your business. And you can get more information about our business growth course coming up soon. So you can find all of that on fairsphotos.com, Ferris Photos, Instagram, and Facebook. Oh, awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you for listening to the Purpose to Create podcast. Share, like, comment, or review this episode. Check out the show notes at www.purposetocreatepodcast.com and connect with us online at Purpose to Create.